Welcome back to Inside Politics. Our guests today are Mary Mancini. She's the president of the Tennessee Democratic Party, and Carol Andrews, a longtime Democratic strategist. Uh, ladies, we've talked a lot during the P Republican convention about what the past presidential nominees had done. They didn't appear, they didn't speak. The only one who was actually at the convention was, was Bob Dole. Going on, All the living ones were the presidents and nominees were not even there. But let's move that to the Democratic side. Let's talk particularly about Tennessee's Al Gore. He has not endorsed anybody in this race. Mary, do you expect him to make an endorsement? And would the convention be a good time for him to do that for Hillary Clinton? Oh, sure. Of course it would. And it would be great think, if he did it. Do you think it. he will? No, I don't. What's he waiting for? Uh, you know, I, I mean, I don't think he's waiting for anything. I think that uh, uh, Vice President Gore has other interests and other fish to fry, and um, and he's doing those things. And you know, and, and if he doesn't want to get back into the polit political arena, uh, you know, we, of course we would love him to. But if he doesn't want to, that is absolutely his prerogative. But Carol, he was the vice president of her husband's administration for eight years. They worked together on many things. The fact that he's not supporting her and hasn't during out the entire primary process. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that say something? Isn't there a subliminal message whether he wants to be involved in politics or not that he doesn't like or there's some difference between he and Mrs. Clinton? Well, I think a lot of people would like to read that into it. But again, I think, uh, like Mary said, you know, I think he's just living another life right now. Uh, let's turn to what happens to some degree after the election is over. In both parties, there were strong charges made by candidates and other supporters that this was a rigged system, that the the primary and the nomination process wasn't being done correctly and needed to be changed. Mary, what changes do you see happening? Are they just going to adjust how they select delegates? And if they do, how do they do that? It certainly won't be anything like it was after 68, right? I hope they don't change anything. I mean, this. So you don't think the system was rigged? No, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. You think not. that was just Bernie Sanders' fodder? Uh, I'm not sure if it about. actually came from Bernie Sanders. I mean, let's look oh, at... Oh, he said it. Man. He used that word many times. Well, let's look at where the uh, origin started. Uh, I think the origin started with the number of debates. Um, from what I understand, uh, before even the debate schedule was announced, uh, all of the candidates, Martin O'Malley, Bernie Sanders, and the Hillary Clinton campaign, um, came together with the DNC and negotiated that number of debates. Um, so, you know, to... to to fast forward a month after that schedule is announced and all of a sudden you're hearing this drumbeat of, you know, that th there aren't enough debates and they're on the wrong night, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that was actually negotiated by all the candidates. So, you know, I look at that and then from what, what's happened after that, um, and, I, and I think, you know, it, it's all sort of this manufacture. It's politics, right? The other thing, though, too, is the, the idea of the superdelegates. I mean, if the Republicans had the superdelegate system, then Donald Trump wouldn't be there. Uh, their nominee, and I think they would prefer that. The other thing is what we saw in 2008 with the superdelegates is that many were pledged to um, Secretary Clinton, and after Barack Obama started to gain traction, many of them switched over. So, um, yeah, they, you know, you may endorse early, but as a superdelegate, you get to make a decision. Carol, to get your thoughts about this, when you get something out, the words like rigged into a system like this, despite how whether there's a lot of substance to it or there's not, it sort of gets out there like a poison in the system. So how do the parties deal with that going forward to have credibility for the next round of the presidential election? Well, I, I think with, with both Trump and, and Bernie Sanders, they were both running as anti-establishment uh, candidates. So that was, that was the best way for them to run. And they can say, you know, the party was rigged, and you had this, this sort of aura out there that with these people who are very dissatisfied with establishment. So that was the way for them to do it. Um, I, you know, I think both parties have some work to do, um, and I agree with Mary. You know, if the Republican Party had a superdelegate system, maybe, you know, that would match up with ours. I, I, you know, I think both parties do have some thinking to do, though. It looks like it's going to be a very close race going in November, but the prognosticators, I'm thinking about Nate Silver and his, his 538 website, he had it 80-20 in terms of his chances for Clinton to win, and that was the beginning of the month. It's now down to 60-40. Should the Democrats start to worry and certainly guard against overconfidence at this point? 
Well, I think the Democrats aren't taking anything um, and never have been for granted. And um, I think the Clinton organization is working as hard as they can, and she's planning on working, you know, in all 50 states um, to including, some degree. Including Tennessee? To some degree. I, I'm not sure to what degree. Mary may know more about that. Mary, are you hoping just to narrow down the margin that Trump carries this state? You don't have any any real hopes that Clinton's going to win this state. Oh, I'm a very optimistic person. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also, Even in the face of reality? Well, of course. <laughs> Yes, no, but seriously, you know, it, it, you know, you look at the two candidates and you see the level of experience and you, and you realize that this state isn't really as red as they want us to think it, of, it is. Think about who we, who we elect statewide, right? Republican or Democrat, they're usually uh, in the middle. They're moderates. They're reasonable people, right? So, uh, you know, and, and Donald Trump is not. He's an extremist. So let's look at that first, you know, and see what the state is like in general. Uh, but the Clinton campaign is investing here, and they have hired a state director for Tennessee, which is extraordinarily exciting that they're putting resources here. Mayor Mancini, thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. Carol Andrews, thank you for being on the show as well. Thank you for having us. And thank you for joping us on Inside Politics this week. Hope you can be back here again for a future show. If you can't get enough politics in the meantime, go to the News Channel 5 website. You'll find my Capital View commentary there. There's a new commentary posted every Friday afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll see you back here next time. Goodbye.